spent the past couple years in a crazy hot market. Louisville home sales decline as demand outpaces supply. Effective communication is at the core of any situation. If you master these two ideas, you'll have a chance of being a successful at residential real estate marketing. I think you need to be looking for investment opportunities that move the needle. The market will never crash if demand exceeds supply. This is what I've been telling you all along. This is the Jay Pitt Show. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitts Show here on Talk Radio 1080. I am your host, Jay Pitts, here with Ryan Harris. Ryan, we're back in the office studio this week. Yeah, I like this. I do. It, the chairs are slightly more comfortable. Yeah. I'm just sure sit back. Our, our producer, Hannah, has a uh, better place to sit, too, and not in the corner of the yeah. radio it's studio. Dimly lit <laughs> corner. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm in my office. I feel home. I feel at home. I think it would be great if Hannah had a mic though for this. I, we talked know, about it last time, like Jamie from Joe Rogan. It'd be we're gonna we're gonna get there. Be funny because we think, do say questions to her every now and then. Well, she is a part of the show, undoubtedly. Yeah, it's just you never get to hear her. Uh-huh. So I don't know. She she might not want to talk though. I, we'll see. We'll have to get there. I have to discuss this off air. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how was your trip? Just got back from Florida. A Remax. Yeah. Trip. Yeah. President Circle, which you know I, I get that like these. Like real estate awards are kind of dubious and the, the titles and all that is funny. Like everybody's a top producer. The, the President Circle is a group of individual broker owners from across the country that had a net growth of 10 agents or more over the course of the last calendar year. So every year there's a President Circle and Remax, you know, as a franchise company, they want agent count as like their KPIs, right? Their yeah. key performance indicators. So when you grow, you get to be a part of this group. There are some perks. There's some things, and uh, this trip was one of it. One of them. It was uh, trip was on Remax, which is nice. Uh, sh- quick, you know, went down Sunday evening, got back yesterday afternoon, which you know, was, for those not keeping track, that's two nights. So, but but it's 70 degrees in Florida. It's not 40. Yeah. Although we do have sun today. Which is nice. It's amazing. It's amazing. The sun still exists in Kentucky. Literally, feel like we haven't seen it in two or three weeks. But uh, it's been wild. Yeah, we went from frigid and gray Mm -hmm. to rainy and gray, and supposedly we're getting fifties later this week. And so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So you were talking about the top producer title. It always cracks me up when I see that. You know what's cooler than top producer? How many millions you've sold? I think it's way better to say I've sold 50 million plus in real estate than top producer. Absolutely. Because, I mean, a top producer in an office, like the brokers we discussed last week that have one agent, you know, you are the top producer if you're the one agent. Yeah, I wonder if I made anybody mad with that. Yeah, you might have, but that's it's okay. Not, it's not everybody, but, you know, I started thinking about this a little. It's exceptions to every rule. started thinking about this a little deeper after making the clip and watching it myself. Yeah. And the reason I think, you know, we said – a lot of individual brokers out there, just for anybody listening that didn't listen last week, that it, they're the, they're their broker and there's no other agent at their brokerage, and they're usually not the best. I think it's because they miss that interaction with other agents and learning from other agents or teaching other agents. And when yeah. it's just yourself, you know, this industry changes a lot. And when it's just yourself, you're not getting that. You're not learning anything new. You're not helping anybody learn. And I think yeah. that's where they struggle. Well, it, it is certainly possible, and I'm sure they do develop what they feel are positive relationships with cross-selling agents. But as we know, you it's really easy to do this business and never speak to anybody but your clients. Yep. Text message, email, electronic signatures, uh, even closings, you don't often run into the other side of the transaction. And it, it yeah, you get lost in the sauce a little bit, right? Start drinking your own Kool-Aid. Your, your opinion is the only one that matters. I mean, there's a lot of change going on in this industry, especially the last few years. Can you imagine if you were, if you were working out of your house as an independent broker with no agents, you do 30 deals a year, you barely talk to those other 30 cross selling agents or brokers. I mean, and you missed out on all that other perspective, you know, where they spend their time, Facebook groups, Facebook groups, no doubt. (laughs) I was going to say happy hour. I don't know. <laughs> Probably wow. that too. Happy hour on Facebook. On Facebook. Yeah. That's it. They're, they're they post at, while intoxicated. Yeah. yeah. No fair. doubt. Fair. Uh, all right. I want to talk real quick about, so ketone IQ. I sent you a message about it. So I'm bringing it up because I'm obsessed with it now. <laughs> uh, I've only had it. I've had it three day, three mornings in a row now. Mm-hmm. And 
for those of you that don't know, ketone IQ, it's straight ketones. So allows you to enter ketosis. Everybody does the keto diet, or not everybody, but people do the keto diet. And there's a whole process that you have to follow to get into ketosis. Correct. No carbs, and that gets you into ketosis, and you lose weight is the first thing. But the best thing about it, clear thinking, more energy. Yeah. So I've been seeing all these endurance athletes talk about it, and even people I know talk about it. And they talk about it in a way that it sounds like it would be a scam, fake, like – just one of those infomercials, like this will solve everything for you. Uh, I'm blown away the first three mornings taking it. I don't have the afternoon or evening crash that I usually have. Alert throughout the day. Uh, so far, I see no no downsides of it right now. Other than it's a little expensive. Uh, if you take one a day for the year and do their subscription, it's going to cost you about $4.50 a day. So 1800 bucks a year if you take one every day. I mean, that's a meal. That's a cheap meal. I know. And it's, you know, it it's, does it's, curb your appet- appetite. Curbs and appetite. I, I really, I swear, I'm more focused on things, clear thinking, no afternoon crash. And you don't believe that there's any, you know, placebo effect going on? There could be, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why I don't, though. Every morning I've taken it, I've felt the effects within five minutes. Really? Mm-hmm. How does it taste? Terrible. Okay. It tastes like... and. A lot of these sponsor athletes will tell you it tastes terrible. So they're not selling the taste. Yeah, they're choking it down. It really does work. It tastes the like flavor? Dayquil, but 10 times worse. Oh. <laughs> so I just chase it with a little water. It comes in like a little five-hour energy shot thing. Oh, so it's that small. Yeah. They act, they that's have good. big bottles where it's like three servings, but I just like the little shots to well, finish it. And that's it the and thing that, that like bothers. So like, you know, greens powder is something I've really struggled to take consistently because of the taste. Because the grittiness, mm-hmm. and it's just like you know. Do you have the flavored ones? I do. So I got a new one. Um, I, I I did Athletic Greens for for quite some time. They're the worst one, and it was the worst taste, and the most expensive, and it's the most expensive. It's like seventy five dollars a month. Uh, it was ninety nine. Is what I was. Oh wow. Them. Yeah. So and that was that. I, I quit that a long time ago. The price may have come down because of competition, but I found another one that's thirty nine a month. And it tastes, it's got a green tea kind of flavor, nice. which, which is much more tolerable. You do have to and get been, past like looking at it though, while you're drinking I, you it. You know what I do? I, I have a, uh, like an opaque plastic cup, like that That's you can't see through. Yeah. And I fill it with about six inches. Not, not as, not enough water. Like it's, you're supposed to take it with like 12 ounces of water. I do about six yeah. and it is really highly concentrated and I just crush it. I have it with my electrolytes every morning. My electrolytes are flavored too, so it's a weird combination. So I, what I'll do is I'll take either the greens powder or the electrolytes with creatine, but I keep the greens and the electrolytes separate. Creatine. Is creatine. that how you say that? Creatine, creatine. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I've never heard creatine before. Yeah, creatine. I'll say. Yeah. I, that's, I don't know. Could be right, though. Could be. Hey, I'm not very smart. Let's try, uh, let's, let's consult the Google machine. We think. Okay. Go, yeah. go, go, go ahead. Look keep, it up. Keep I'll keep right. talking while, about while keto you go, IQ. I can, I can multitask. Uh, there's only one store in Kentucky that sells ketone IQ, though. And it's in Elizabethtown, Kentucky at their running store. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to have to start ordering it online. Creatine. Is creatine is how okay. you pronounce it. Yep. Teen, T E E N. Want to know me? One, one Go me. Nothing. Credit I to me. I, I think I've certainly said it both ways. I don't know that I would have argued which one was more correct. Uh, you know what term I've been using too much now? <laughs> What's that? I keep saying credit to me, credit. to my friends. And it's all because I've been using Louisville basketball as my measuring stick for my, my sports betting. And it's been making a killing for me. You just fade them. Any team game. that Louisville plays close, I'll bet the other team to beat them next time they play. Because <laughs> oh, if wow. Louisville plays them close, you know they are not very good. <laughs> oh wait, so you're betting when Louisville has a good game against someone, yeah. you fade that team yeah. on their next outing. Oh man, and it works. Well, I know Louisville's not beating spreads, so I mean, so I, I think uh, I've read somebody on on Twitter or X or whatever. And uh, the, all they've done the entire year is fade Louisville against the spread, and they've won a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get into our consumer real estate question of the week. Probably won't be able to get through it, but that's okay. So this is a question I have. I know a lot of agents reach out to you on social media. What's the most common thing they ask you about if, if you have random agents reach out to you? 
Oh, great question. Um, it's a lot of different things. You know, um, we've had a few, I was actually just noticing the other day, um, you know, we had the, the par- parenting advice uh, clip go mm-hmm. viral on Instagram. It's like north of like, it's like almost 600,000 views now. Um, but quietly, I've had three separate videos. One is over 50,000 on TikTok. And two more are like 39 or 42,000, something like that. I get a lot of questions relating to those three videos. Um, the one that probably drove the most was the two different types of marketing. From agents? From agents. Yeah. Well, because those are those are really um, – one is about trailers and mobile homes, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. The conversion of a mobile home or personal property to real estate, which applies much more broadly in real estate itself. Um but the two different types of marketing gets me a lot of questions, which if you want, after the break, we can kind of get into that. But I'll just give the, the, the clear cut answer right now. Two different types of marketing, right, are brand engagement marketing and direct response marketing, right? With, you know, brand engagement being marketing the agent and the service and direct response being you're marketing a property, something that brings in eyeballs, hand raisers, if you will. So those are like, that. that is probably the, the single greatest question I get is how to market yourself um, versus market your property. All right. We're going to cut to a couple ad sponsors and we'll be back on the Jay Pitch Show. Talk radio, 1080, real news, real talk. See you in a second. Welcome back to the Jay Pitch Show. I'm your co-host, Ryan Harris. All right. So you were just talking about the most common questions agents ask you when they reach out on social media. So I'll tell you, I've actually been getting a decent amount of questions nice. um, and it's not so much, it is from agents and it, or it's from people that are going to become agents. Let's say that mm-hmm. thinking about it, reaching out. I feel like I'm at that age now, 28, where some people might've started a career right. and they're not loving it. And now they see everybody they know is in real estate. And yeah. let's be honest, most agents make it look glamorous and glorious and they easy, uh, which is kind of part of the gig. But once you get into it, you realize yeah, it is not like that at all. Uh, Absolutely. But the common question I get: w- just what advice do you have for somebody becoming an agent? And I tell them the same two things pretty much every time. One, join a team, and not just any team. Especially if you don't think you're going to be able to provide leads or you don't have a good lead source. Yeah. Just join a Zilla Flex team. Absolutely. Uh, you got to look for those now. I, I have a question for you about that. But the second thing I'd tell them, post everything on social media once you become an agent. Uh, fake it till you make it. Sure. It's part of it. But how would somebody go about finding a Zillow Flex team? Um, that's a good question. I, I think you've got to do a little bit of industry networking. Um, there's a Okay, so h- here's what you do. If Let's presume you're, you're relatively young, right? Because that's probably the people you're interacting with. Correct. Um, and also the kind of people that would probably be more attuned to this type of business or lead generation or what have you, right? It's not going to be that hard to find the Zillow Flex teams because they have other qualities, yeah. right? They're very active on social media. That's probably why they got into, got this opportunity. They're probably pretty productive. You can, it's not hard if you, you know, pick up, Instagram and a couple of easy searches after doing some Google searching to like filter down to a list of, you know, highly reliable suspects, if you will. Yeah. Right. Like it would not be hard to find me. Yeah. Right. So I was the first Zillow flex team in Louisville, 25th in the country. It's not going to be hard to figure out that with, with a decent, probability that I could be one of those. Yeah. And and it's the same for the other four in town, right? Um, Are two of those four in this office? Yeah, two of the four <laughs> in this office. So three of five in, in the city of Louisville are in That's Remax cool. Premier Properties. So, you know, you find me even as a broker, you're probably going to have a chance to, to, to realize that Scott Radcliffe and Tracy French are also fitting that bill. Yeah. Um, the other two maybe slightly less, um, you know, obvious, but you're going to have a chance. But once you talk to one, I mean, if the, if, if a potential agent came in here and said, who are the other Zillow Flex teams in the city? I would tell them. Yeah. So then you just ask questions. Mm-hmm. But if you, if, if you pick up a 40-year veteran independent agent, 
you know, at, you know, a regular Remax office or, a, you know, a Seminin or any of our competitors, they won't have a clue who the flex teams are. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'll tell you another thing to do, look for reviews. Okay. Everybody understands the importance of reviews, but who has close to a thousand? I do. Well, I was just about to say, if you're somebody listening to this right now and you're thinking about getting your real estate license and you're in another state and you're mm-hmm. thinking, huh, Zillow Flex team sounds nice. What I would do if I was you, go to Zillow, search the agents in your area, find the top teams that come up on that search, yeah. call, you might get their agents, call their agents say, hey, I'm okay. thinking about getting my license. Are you a Zillow Flex team? Yeah, that's it. That's that, it's that it's easy. It's probably the best way. You guys to get it. Zillow Flex leads. They'll know. You know, they'll, they'll absolutely know. And, and then say, when they say yes, say, well, I, I'd like to meet your team lead. Can you set me up a meeting? Yeah. Total, totally. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it. Cool. All right. Let's move on. We're going to keep it real estate this segment too. And then okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get out of real estate. Keep it real estate. But uh, I have a two part question for you. Okay. First, what has to happen this year for it to be an awesome year in real estate for uh, agents and consumers? Like economically? Sure. I think, I think the Fed's got to drop rates a couple times. Um, I think what you're starting to see a little bit of right now. Okay, so let's let's talk about where where we are. It's February first. Okay, February first, 2024. Um, you know, rates dropped significantly in Q4 at the very end of 23. Um, have trickled down even slightly more in January of 24. Mm-hmm. Um, inventory remains exceedingly low. Um, we're off a good percentage. It's hard to say a meaningful percentage right now, but compared to January of 23, we're off even more. Um, sales are also down. Okay. In January of 24 versus 23. I think that it was a pent up demand situation that you, you was pretty, uh, pretty typical to see in a January, at least over the last decade or so. Um, you know, we had a really, really slow, November, December of 22. Yeah. We had a much more, much more active November, December of 23. So there wasn't a much pent up demand in January. So, um, anyway, here's what has to happen right now. What we're seeing, I think is the fine, the finally, the stagflation kind of, uh, economy that we were expecting to see more in 23 and the fed saw it coming. They've already signaled rate drops. They got a slightly higher than expected inf- uh, inflation uh, statistic last month, so they met yesterday and did not rate, did not drop rates, which I think was already telegraphed. Yeah, um, but I, I got to think that there's a quarter drop in May and subsequent drops throughout the year. Um, all that to say, again, those are the those are the the lead indicators, and the lag will be mortgage interest rates will drop probably into the high fives by the end of the year. I think that really needs to happen. That's the first shoe, right? Have you seen Fannie Mae and Mortgage Bankers Association, their forecast for average 30 year fixed rate? Uh, they I released probably it today. Have. They it, released it today. I it's didn't pretty see it on today. point with what you just said. I didn't so. see it today, but I bet it's like five, eight, nine or something. So it's, it, it's pretty on par with what you said. It says 2024 Q1, Fannie Mae is 6.4%. MBA, 6.9%. Q2, 6.2% for Fannie Mae, 6.6% for MBA. Q3, 6% for Fannie Mae, 6.3% for MBA. Q4, 5.8% for Fannie Mae, yeah. 6.1% for MBA. Yeah, well, it's, it, should be, it should, be, um, should be noted there. Mortgage Bankers Association uh, gives par rates without points, and Fannie Mae publishes... I think a half discount. Gotcha. Okay, which it, it's not dollar. It's not. It's not a bit for bit, if you will. Mm-hmm. Bit being basis points. So, but point being, um, Fannie Mae's rate that they quote comes with some discount that a, that a borrower must pay to achieve that rate. So that's why the higher rate. But five, sub five or sub six by the end of the year is exactly what I would expect. Yeah. So pretty close. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what I've noticed with my listings, and you might have seen it on your team, and I'd be interested if we can pull some statistics on this for next show. Uh, I'm noticing I need more showings on my listings to get an offer. That's been trending. 
Yeah. It's been trending that direction. Um, I think there is demand um, that, you know, there, it wouldn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot for demand to exceed supply, but how we have significantly less demand than we once had that Mm -hmm. we grew accustomed to. And you're seeing a return to some traditional norms. I mean, or at least moving in that direction. I mean, a three month, uh, 90 days to sale is not, I mean, that's still half of traditional balanced market for, to produce one sale six months. There's a reason why listing contracts tend to be six months. Uh, historically that's the sale cycle. And so if you have three months to under contract 120 days to close, we're still not there. Okay. But yeah, you're not, you're not seeing four showings to an offer. You're seeing eight showings to an offer. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm seeing too, I I think buyers still are ready. Yeah. We, I think they are more hesitant, but on my listings, I think it's still smart. If you have 10 showings in a week, and no offers, price reduction is yeah, absolutely uh, do it earlier rather than later. I don't think you can wait around for another 10 showings and expect to get an offer. Mm, absolutely not. Yeah. I mean, 20 showings shouldn't happen. It yeah. really shouldn't, unless it happens in one day, and then you underpriced. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this question. Are you more in favor of aggressive uh, price reductions or little ones? I, it really depends. It's, yeah. hard, it's hard to say. Um, you know, uh, presuming that, uh, let's let's say an ideal listing situation where I went in and met the seller. I usually provide a provide a five to ten thousand dollar window where I would like to see the listing start at. Um, and and it was my number that I felt would produce a sale within sort of thirty days or so. Um, at then I probably am a fan of smaller, more frequent price reductions because, you know, something is amiss and a, an input is off, right? This is, pricing is not science, it's pseudoscience. And so, um, yeah, but if if, if I took a a listing, not begrudgingly, but, you know, having, because I won't take one without disclaiming to the seller that I feel like it's overpriced. Yeah. And if I take it because I like the listing and they have a commitment for them to reduce, then I may be looking for a more market moving kind of aggressive reduction. Yeah. You know, I think there's probably people listening to this like, well, why wouldn't you just still take a listing if it's overpriced? And, you know, I'm learning this more and more, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of money that goes into marketing a property and paying for photos. And if you know it's overpriced and they're not going to want to come down on price at all. You don't get that back. You're basically throwing your money away. You don't get that back. Plus, you're, you're, you're ruining your stats that other sellers are going to ask for. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. And and it's a frustration. Who wants to see a seller's name come up on their phone and dread that phone call? Yeah. Because conveniently, it's easy to forget that the agent told you that it was overpriced. Yep. All right. We'll be back on the J-Pitt Show Talk Radio. A couple ad sponsors. See you in a couple sucks. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitts Show. I'm your host, Jay Pitts. All right, so can we take a quick moment? All right, just a quick moment. Not, not It's not what you're thinking. It's not what you're thinking. Uh, we're not going to talk about how Ryan ended last segment, but that was good, too. Um, can we take a quick moment and, and, like, let's be excited for the return of my voice? Yeah. And I don't have a cough drop in my mouth right now making me look and sound weird on the microphone. We came back to you live last week. Uh, because the hiatus was killing us, but I still didn't have a voice. I mean, I was, yeah. I was nursing it, right? Like right? got the ankles taped. Did and, the vacation help you get it back? You know, a little, a few days in 70 degree weather and, and humidity by the beach helped a lot. No so, agents running in your office. No agents making me talk all day. You know, my wife is an introvert, so it may surprise you when I get away from this office and it's just me and her, we don't speak a lot. Yeah. It's a lot quieter. Uh-huh. So anyway, all right. So I think you got a, a video for me to react. Yeah, to. let's react to this video. So we've talked on this show recently about, I think it's a bad look for agents to make certain posts. It hurts all agents making memes, things like that. This one kind of falls along those lines. Uh, we've both watched this video, mm-hmm. but uh, haven't heard each other's thoughts. So I'm going to go ahead and play it. Here are things I never do as a real estate agent. I never book visits or meet with clients after 6 o'clock. When I started out as a real estate agent, I was at my client's beck and call. I would show up where they wanted to, go where they wanted to, pick them up, 
drop them off. I was always living in fear that they were going to drop me if I didn't do everything they said. But over the years, I learned that if a buyer or a seller is serious about doing business with you, they'll accommodate their schedule to suit yours. You see, buyers and sellers need to buy their homes and sell homes. And since you are the real estate agent that is facilitating that, it's okay to work within your rules of engagement. I believe in any business, it's very important to set boundaries on your schedule because if not, people will walk all over it. And they don't do it intentionally. You just have to make yourself clear. They just don't know. And you might say to yourself, well, yeah, there's people that work all day and need to see you in the evenings. Nope, because those are the same people who could see you on the weekends. And that's why I don't work with clients past six o'clock. Here are things I need. So, what's that background music to? I, 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 it, Is it Mario? It's not Mario. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Hannah knows the answer because she's probably used it on videos of mine, of ours. We, yeah, oh, it's yeah. The weed. It's, it's like the uh, weed. when your avatar, little character, is sitting there. Can, can we take a moment for Ryan's head nod the whole time the video is playing? I'll Did you notice that. you were doing that? Oh yeah. Okay. I'll never forget the first time I played or had a Wii. And played it. That's funny. Did you accidentally like slip out of your hand and no? Bust the TV? But first time I got it, played all night Wii bowling, and woke up the next day. I'm probably twelve, sore as can be. All of us were <laughs> sore. I guess you're just using muscles you never use. Well, that's but, so uh, funny. It, yeah. Um. So okay. So back to the video. First thoughts. You want you want me to go first? I mean, for me. I feel like we're going to come in different places, so I want to hear your first. So I agree with controlling your schedule is important. Feeling like you have some control over it. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to meet clients whenever they want all the time. Now, to just say you're never going to meet with clients or talk to them after 6 p.m. as a blanket statement, I don't believe that. That's pretty weak. Uh, unless she doesn't produce anymore and has a team of people that uh, do that for her. But, you know, as an agent, people work all day. You're going to have to show them homes after 6 o'clock. Uh, they can't just accommodate your schedule all the time. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's important for you to control your schedule to some extent. Yeah. I, I, think, it's a, I, think, I think it's a bad look video. Uh, to me, and I don't know anything about this person's business. I think it was probably purposeful how it was filmed. And Well, here's the thing. It, okay, so I do a lot. We do a lot of content here that's directed at real estate agents. This video is very clearly directed at real estate agents and not consumers. My guess is the person that does this video, they don't sell a lot personally or they're trying not to do that quite quite that much. Uh, they're trying to go more viral from you know real estate agent views, that kind of thing. Um, it reminds me, and, and I'm not going to, I'm going to disclaim this by saying this is not all real estate coaches. Okay. But, and I, I have a real estate coach, so I believe in coaching. Um, my coach would never sell me some of this nonsense, but I will acknowledge the industry sells agents convenient messages. They know that a hot button for agents is the fact that they can't con seem to control their schedule. They can't seem to find balance. And so this person who is saying, I never show yeah. a home after 6 p.m. Eh, that, that's, what, that's what the agents that struggle to, to, to balance, to find balance, that's, that's what they want to hear. It's, it's very thirsty in that, in that respect. Yeah. So basically... I just think it's a bad look for a real estate agent. Now I say some things that are inconvenient truths about the business in our content sometimes, but I never put that sort of finality, yeah. you know, that sort of like really serious, like exclamation point on these crazy statements. There's a time and a place for everything. You know, I went on a listing appointment this morning. I don't go on a lot of client appointments anymore, but I did today. Yeah. I mean, it was a sphere person of one of our team agents it's a n listing that's north of a million dollars it's really challenging to price I, I ran a cma i went and met him we did a walkthrough with the seller it was great awesome you know i mean but but that's not every day for me anymore and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say i don't go you can make a million dollars a year in real estate and never meet a client yeah like <laughs> okay it's too it's good a lot to be of true referrals it's a whole lot of nonsense <laughs> yeah. right there so anyway, I, yes, controlling the schedule is great. We've talked at length on this uh, show about 
the way I handle scheduling, you know, providing options, taking control of conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, What she could have said is, I'm a professional and I control my schedule. And I present with confidence to my prospects or my clients and they understand that they want me involved even if it means working on my timetable. Yeah. And that, that, that would have been true. And the only unfortunate thing about that, though, those tend to not go viral. You know? No, it's not going to go yeah. viral. And hers did. I mean, I don't know how many views it has, but it has about 94,000 likes. So definitely over millions of yeah. views, probably multiple millions. She probably got a lot of hate from, from consumers in the con- oh, comments. Absolutely, which is bad for the look of real estate agents. So we've talked about this. Yep. If you're a real estate agent, you want to look professional, or you want to you want to be off as <laughs> if you want to be professional, you better look like it and That's act true. like it. Uh, I believe in I'm believing that more and more every day. I do think it's important to show your personality, but uh, it's it's it, there's a fine line. Getting attention. I mean, we 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 do some stuff that gets attention. Um, we do some stuff that's humorous, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, humorous truths are a big part of what we do, but um, you have to remain professional while you do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, okay, let's uh, jump to a little to- different topic here. So, Jacob Thompson. I just learned this this past week, and the reason I'm bringing it up now is this weekend is the Olympic marathon uh, time trials. Yeah. So, Jacob Thompson from Louisville, I think he's 28. He went to NC State first, transferred to UK. He's one of the top three marathoners in the country. I did not know that. Uh, lived off Dixie Highway. I think he went to Holy Cross, maybe. Uh, it was a phenom growing up. He runs a 211 marathon. So wow. in order to make the Olympics in Paris, he has to run a 211, 30 or better and finish top three. And he's one of the people they think Can do should. Uh, he's one of the top three running it. Wow. 211, 30 down in Florida this Saturday. That's like a 455 pace. Pace. For 26.2. 26.2. It's disgusting. It's insane, isn't it? Yeah, I can't even imagine. Yeah, so pretty cool. Good luck to him. I don't know him. I have friends that run and know him. He was just on one of their podcasts I listened to. I saw a viral video the other day of a kid running a 359 single mile. Yep. Like, which is... Well, you know, or no, first no, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. It was a two. Was it 259? Is that possible? Well, I don't know if anybody's broken a three-minute mile. I don't think it so. It might have been that. But it uh, might have been what it, what the video was. Anyway, it was a viral video of a kid. But I mean, the kid was like he fell fell across the line. Yeah, you know, well, it you might know, have been a two fifty nine breaking the four minute mile. Thought was thought to have been impossible, and now there's high schoolers breaking it. Yeah, uh, it's that's what this kid appeared to so be. So fast, um, fastest. I'm, I'm googling now. Fastest mile time ever. Fastest marathon is like two oh one. It was the guy's first marathon. No, it couldn't. It couldn't have been what I said. Three. This is. This is three forty three point one three. Yeah, fastest. I don't think anybody. I th- I think breaking three. That was probably a three. It was probably a three fifty nine. Yeah. That's probably what it was. I probably said it correctly originally. Uh, After I said it, I thought, well, that's that may not be right, but yeah. Yeah. All right, we got another minute of this segment, and I thought of this question right before we started. Okay. I was making myself some coffee. Do you know how much you spend a year on coffee for the office? I don't. Kinda, I have no idea, and I don't want to know. Um, we do, so we could have done you know one of those. We, well, we do K cups. Yeah, and that's probably more expensive than it should be. Um, probably spend more on that than I should. Uh, I could get one of those leased machines and uh, pro- have a provider, and it would probably be less expensive. It would also be a lot more work and like having to clean and you know brew coffee every day. But um, I-, I really don't know, yeah. and I don't know that I really want to know. Uh, and I wonder how much like on the creamers and stuff in there. Well, we it would just be cool to know how many K cups were consumed by this office. Every that year. would be funny. It um, would. That it'd be a cool be a, stat. To know. Be a question for Heather. Um, we need to, we need to see about that. We, we, we buy them from Sam's, yep. um, we buy them in bulk. So I, I, I I'm, right. I'm going to leave, I'm going to let you sign us off to the next segment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave this room and I'm going to go talk to Heather and see if she has an answer. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's cut to a couple ads. Uh, appreciate you hanging around with us here on the J Pitt show right here on talk radio 1080. We'll be back in a And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the J. Pitts Show here on Talk Radio 1080. I'm your host, J. Pitts. All right, segment four. Uh, something for you. 
This is off the cuff. Uh, just got back from, like I said, the President's Circle event in Fort Lauderdale. Not the President of the United States. Not the President of the United <laughs> States, the President of REMAX International. So, interesting thing. We did a little mastermind, and I got some good stuff. Got some good stuff. Don't get me wrong. A lot of these things I don't get a lot from. Um, I, you know, I've been in coaching for a long time. We talked about that last segment. I've been uh, very fortunate to have good mentors, be surrounded by some good people in the real estate industry and put to practice a lot of things culturally here within the company and training wise that just, I, I don't find things often that match up. This is a good example. And I think this is a credit to you. So I'm in this meeting and they're, they, they're posing these questions and we're in like group, you know, like table dis discussion. I, just, I hate things like that. Well, I don't love it. I don't love it, but there were a couple good things come yeah. away from it. That's why I, I wanted to couch it going in. Um, Somebody stood up and used as an example of a culture builder, cultural building activity at their office that they do the Million Dollar Month Club. Oh, yeah. And so, in case you're unaware, okay. Um, did you raise your hand and say? I did not because I've it's gone so far, okay, and in certain instances, I will claim credit, and I always give credit to Mr. Ryan Harris. <laughs> I will say, very early in his career, Ryan came to me and said, you know what you ought to do? Because he did it, like, one month. Like, yeah, one month. Yeah, like, the, a few months or something. In like, the very beginning, you did it, like, one month. Or I would just literally, so, I'll let you explain what Million Dollar Month Club was, but I would literally do things like... Nine hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars pending in the last thirty-six hours. Yeah, like it's about you know marketing is how can you how good can you make something? Sound? You got to package it, and that's what we talked about earlier. Don't say top producers say I've sold a hundred million dollars plus of real estate. Yeah, absolutely, like, that's way cooler. So whether how it came about, I don't remember exactly, but Ryan came to me and he said, "You know what you ought to do is you ought to reward agents." on the team that get a million dollars in business pending in the course of a calendar month. And I said, you know, that's a good idea. And uh, we went kind of into a leadership meeting. I said, okay, we're going to, I thought about it for a couple of days and I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We have this club. And originally it was thought You're that it would be, plaques I, I, well, we have a plaque, literally yeah. have a plaque and it has like 24 spaces on it. And we were like, oh, this will last us a little while and we'll put a plaque up, you know, so-and-so March, 2021, you know, whatever. And then it became so regularly occurring mm -hmm. that we had to scrap the plaque idea altogether. And we put out five, six, eight, ten 10 a month sometimes, uh, in pending business. But it was just really funny to me that this broker owner felt like it was such a novel idea. And I'm not certain that we were the first ever, but like, I'm pretty sure. I think we were. We were. It was much more novel when we started doing it. I'm, I mean, I can't say for certain that it was like the first time anybody had ever made a thing out of it. Yeah. But now everyone, literally, it has gone to this, you know, clandestine, middle of nowhere broker that's probably, you know, we 30, have. 40 years in the business. And this is like, the thing that they claim builds so much culture. I wish we could document it. I so, wish we could. You know, we talk about broke agent media, their articles on here a lot. I think they should do an article on million dollar month club and the origins of it. And I, the origins were right here. <laughs> this is where it started. I, I remember seeing your buddy, uh, Tom Ferry get credit from somebody. Yeah. They started it because they saw Tom Ferry doing it. But Tom, you did it for Tom Ferry. Yeah. So I don't know. If anybody man. wants to come before, I would I would challenge anyone. Yes. To prove that they did it before us, I would actually love it if somebody did, so that I didn't feel like I had the burden of proving it myself. <laughs> but like honestly, I don't know anybody, and I stay pretty attuned. Yeah. Do you right. think uh, California teams have to do like ten million dollars? Ten million month? dollar months <laughs> because they're yeah, yeah because if they do one transaction like the average sales price in California is greater than a million yeah so it's like oh you sold one house yeah 
<laughs> but million dollar month, I mean, was and you get football was helmets good. for the agents and do like stickers on them. Helmet or, stickers. Yeah. We did helmet stickers for our for our uh, you know middle school football not that long ago. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right, peeled them off at the end of the season and put them on a canvas for pressing. <laughs> so yeah, if love you're it. out there, challenge us. Challenge us. Love, I'd love, love to see hear it. it. But uh, let's move on. You're talking about your wife introvert so she is lines up perfectly with this the Uh introvert economy we've entered so before i get into this would you say after the pandemic you stay in a little more maybe go out to dinner earlier uh leave things earlier (coughs) well i've gotten older that's for sure um the pandemic started just after i had my third child so i think it would be easy to attribute things to the pandemic that would have just happened with having three kids. Um, I will say that 24 might be, we might travel more than any other year. Yep. And 23, we traveled certainly more than any year. Okay. So probably not then. So probably. I don't know. Um, I can't really answer this I will either, say we go I out to dinner less. Now. We go out to dinner less. Yeah. But it's not because. Um, but do you eat? take out more we do eat take out a lot um we take out a lot because of how busy we are and you know i don't know man it's really hard to say i'm I'm anxious to hear what the story says yes so i'll read this so it says while there weren't many redeeming qualities of lockdowns one thing that stuck is people's desire to be home and stay there we're now officially in the introvert economy with less people less in-person flirting earlier nights and fewer drinks let's get into it Young people are going out less, and when they do, they do so earlier. The number of diners who were seated between 2 to 5 p.m. doubled from 2019 to 2023 per Yelp. In New York City alone, the trendy time to meet for dinner is no longer 8 p.m. It's 5.30 per data from Resi. Uh, There's a few more we'll get into. Uh, When people do go out, they're increasingly opting out of drinking. Gen Z is on track to be the most sober generation ever. The percentage of drinkers from age 18 to 34 alone has fallen from 72% to 62% over the last 20 years it's, per gallop. That's absolutely a trend, but the use of other substances is substantially up. Right. It says conversely, so, those age 55 and up are drinking more, going from 49% to 59% in the same period. That's not surprising, but like less marijuana use and things like that. Marijuana is certainly going up and certainly other things too. Um, but like... I, I don't know, like, I mean, that's that's just evident by, like, legalization of certain narcotics, things that were unthinkable. Yeah. Right? So I'm reading through the rest of these tweets. <laughs> I'm laughing because I didn't read through all of them before this. It says, alcohol often acts as a social lubricant, which may be part of the reason why fewer people are venturing to flirt when they go out. About 52% of single men have not approached a woman in person over the last year, well, according to data from Date Psychology. Okay, so this is kind of an alarming trend as well. And, you know, the birth rate is right at about its peak right now mm-hmm. and is expected to substantially decline over the next 20 years. You know, there are some really serious, like uh, Elon Musk is one who absolutely fears population collapse. Yep. You know, um, there are certain countries around the world that are well below established nations that are well below replacement rate mm-hmm. uh, in terms of birth. So it, th- we're gonna have to build the robots, man. A lot of technology. Um, a, a lot of people expect that technology has really reduced the interaction between males and females socially. It's kind of crazy, man. It's kind of crazy. I'm going to finish this real quick. This thread uh, it says 53% of men are afraid of being called creepy. <laughs> and half a single men between 18 to 30 claim to be voluntarily single. I mean, I'm sure they're just saying that. They probably don't well. choose to be single. <laughs> just nobody's choosing them. Uh, so how does one fill their time? Online shopping. It goes on to just talk about how much online shopping's increased since the pandemic. Yeah, online shopping is a huge trend. I, I, can, I can see, I buy the introvert economy. I buy that for sure. Um, you know, I, I can tell you that just even so- socially, it is, it's, more challenging to interact with people these days Mm -hmm. because I I don't know if it's fear of, you know, crime or what have you. Um, there's just being a stranger is weird. It's weird. If a stranger communicates with you, there's people I know scared of calling a restaurant to order. 
like just so phone anxiety i've read about this is just increased I, exponentially I, I can tell you that um you know my wife wants to she w okay so here's a good example we have two um two mexican restaurants you know authentic Mex mexican restaurants within you know five minutes of our house right um one door dashes one does not Mm -hmm. She will absolutely go to the one that door dashes a hundred times out of a hundred because she doesn't have to pick up the phone and call to place the order. The, the one for, has free delivery. She will pay for door dash instead of phone and order and receive free delivery. Yeah. I do that stuff. Opportunity costs is what I think. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a phone call. Yeah. It takes to me, it takes not much longer than, but I'm social. I'm not, I'm yeah. not a, I'm not an introvert. Yeah. Well, I do appreciate door dash. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. Um, they're doing good. That, it is what it is. It's amazing how many people DoorDash now. Uh, we only have a few seconds left. I want to end it though, real quick. I'll let you sign us off. But uh, I'm raising money for Donate for Life Kentucky sure. uh, through the marathon I'm running, running the Derby Festival Marathon. Donate Life, awesome charity. They uh, advocate for people to become organ donors, and they help donor families after someone passes away and yeah. donates their organs financially they help them out that's great i'm um, raising money for that i had a cousin who uh, received a double lung transplant donate life was was a big part of it so uh yeah raising money for them Very excited cool. the goal is ten thousand dollars nice and if you follow me on socials it's ryan harris.re i'll have a link there soon and a whole fundraising page uh very cool would appreciate the help out so very cool once upon a time i i ra raised money while training for a marathon as well uh it gives you the motivation now i know you don't need any you're a much better runner than i than i oh, was no, i did i would have missed but, runs already but i haven't missed one because of it yeah it's really cool really cool and that's you know just that little added push to give you the mental toughness that you it need. is very cool all right guys that's all the time we got for you this week appreciate you tuning in right here at the amazing rpp studio yeah uh we'll be here i think for the future yeah, Jay's going to buy me a cyber truck over He's got the shoulder. cyber truck over Ryan's shoulder. But that's all the time we got this week. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Check us out on the socials. Check out Ryan's fundraising efforts. And uh, we'll catch you next week for the Jay Pitts Show here on Talk Radio 1080. Jay Pitts, I'm your host, Ryan Harris. We'll see you soon.